Hey, welcome to this video. I've been asked to give a tutorial on how to make a cement pot like the ones that you can see on the inset uh, in previous videos like in the CHASM and I decided to make this tutorial. I'm here in my garage shop and I will be explaining things as I go and we'll see what we come up with. The important thing to know about cement is that um, once you mix water the time starts ticking. So there are a number of things that I want to explain. Cement is one of the ingredients just like flour is an ingredient in dough and to make this dough we need cement, we need an aggregate and we need water. If you use rocks and larger size aggregate is normally called concrete and if you use sand it's normally called mortar. Once you mix these three ingredients together um, the cement will cure and if the ratio of water to cement is too large you will have a more compromised material because water will actually be trapped. The water is there to to facilitate a chemical reaction uh, between the particles of cement which is uh, I don't know exactly what cement is but uh, I know that it's a chemical reaction and it's exothermic when you when you cure cement you hear you, you feel that it's warm so you can mix yourself cement aggregate and water and the aggregate can be sand or it can be perlite for example or other things that I will experiment with uh, today I will use a ready-made mortar which is fast setting uh, you can see the picture in the inset. It's a rapid set that I buy at Home Depot. Um, this allows me to to have a product that in I can finish it essentially in two to three hours. Uh, by the time that I finish the, the the main inner part, I can already start working on the outside or on the inside with another layer and because of that is very convenient otherwise with the, with the, uh, a normal mixture you have to wait until it it sets and and depending on the water to cement ratio not only it will take longer to set but it will be less structurally stable now uh you can you can play with the, how fluid your mix is and you can experiment with forums when you see for example in youtube uh, people making cement art for the most part they use forms where they pour a fairly liquid liquid um, mixture but so far I have not experimented with that I have only experimented with a drier mixture that sets faster and that you can sculpt so in the chasm video which is linked in the description I, I put a link to a video of Catherine Stanek which is a concrete artist and most of what I'm showing here today is based on that. Um, the red, the fast setting mixture has certain chemicals that speed up the, the, the set, the curing reaction of the concrete and therefore um, that's, that's what this 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 ingredients x ingredients are, uh, I'm not entirely sure what they are but I know that you can buy them uh, and 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 make the mixture yourself you can also for example mix a certain ba a certain amount of 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 mortar uh, aggregate water and cement which is standard setting with a certain proportion of the of, of the rapid set mortar and then with that have a mixture that has a longer working time for example 
but for the purposes of what I'm doing today I'm happy with how fast it sets but because it fast it sets so fast in fact uh, I will create a batch of of the dry mix and I'll make a few experiments with uh, the dry mix also contains a, a number of additives that I'll explain in a moment but but it also contains pigment so I'll make a few experiments with pigment to see how the color looks at the end because it's not apparent in the dry mix once I'm happy with the with the appearance of, of the color then I'll split the dry mix in a number of in at least two batches so I don't have to work against the time too strenuously to to not lose the remaining of the cement that will then um, dry so the cement will be here and every now and then I'll be working on it and and then using it and working on it a little bit more and use it a bit more and like that uh, I hope that we will be able to to um, to not waste material and not be too pressed in time so what what uh, what other um, additives I put the cement there are two main ones one is fiber so it can be glass fiber but I use a polymer fiber instead this is how it looks like it's it's a it's something that gets completely dispersed into the dry mixture and at the end you will see that your cement pot looks like sort of furry you could use also um, gl uh, glass fibers the, the the goal of these two additives is to further reinforce the cement so it has um, tension strength added tension and strength and it greatly improves the, the the stability of the final product uh, with this sort of fiber that I use at the end I can burn with a torch everything that is on the surface before I seal the container and uh, with that I don't have any marks I never used glass fiber I don't know if those in the surface are visible at the end or not uh, but this is the product I have the second the second product that I use is um, super plasticizer and this is really the magic here uh, the cement is sort of sandy and granular but especially at the low cement to water ratio that I use but once you add the super plasticizer and you work it in and you will see that in a moment it becomes really uh, like play-doh uh, like plasticine like uh, what like clay and as it hardens you have less and less ability to to mold it and more and more ability to use a chisel for example to or a chisel to 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 carve on it or a file to scrape from it so I have a number of tools here at the ready chisels files wire brush the, this is interesting the, the metal wire brush adds a certain patina to it which is quite interesting I have a number of um, spatulas and, and all sorts of cement working stuff plastic and metal plastic knives now I like the rough look that the surface gets without anything uh, touching it as it cures but if you cover with plastic or if you cover with parchment paper or aluminum foil it will become smooth so this is something that I want to work more in the future but this is not something I will do today um, I also reinforce the fibers and for that I use this sort of material which has a thir uh, thickness to it maybe two or three millimeters 
thick and once it's in fully embedded on the on as the form I then put cement all around it very thin it can be very thin so you will see how thin and light the product will be and and uh, with that um, it will be further strengthened so the the main point is to have a frame and the frame is only necessary for bigger things for example today I will use this to make the form for the wireframe but afterwards I will not use it anymore and and that's it you need you need a fiber and one more thing that I use is this um, add mixture it's an entrainer that in, that 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 uh, traps micro air bubbles inside the cement and with that it is further um, further protected from free straw because you can imagine that a micro crack once it gets to a micro air bubble the tension of that crack gets released and it stops there so this is this is how that works now uh, I will use gloves to work with the cement once it's wet and I will use a, a mask while I'm pouring the powder and it's going everywhere because this is it's it's dangerous it's not really dangerous in your hand to have the wet cement uh, many times at the end my glove is broken and I see that I have cement all over my hand or or I use glove in one hand and not in another but but you should be careful so of course all the normal um, safety rules apply and and please be careful we're all adults here and um, we are all responsible for our, our own actions so let's start uh, first by building the frame then we will proceed to mix the dry mix test the colors then separate split it into a few batches get the first batch worked and then applied on the on the on the frame get the second batch worked and 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 applied on the frame and we'll go like that and we'll see how it goes so let's get started uh, you can see I have a watch I will remove it I'm not removing the the ring because it's inside the glove but you might as well um, uh, remove it so first uh, we'll build a frame let's talk about drainage if you if you want a real drainage hole you can use uh, ceramic or concrete drill or glass drill bit diamond drill bit like this but I don't like drainage holes anymore uh, I want just like with the previous pot uh, drainage all around and aeration all around and the bottom will stay uh, 
flat I don't need feet therefore for the pot and so now I will cut patterns So now, now we have our our frame ready, and now we'll start preparing the cement. So, as I mentioned, mortar mix, rapid set, and now I'll put the mask while I'm working on the powder. As you get more experience with this sort of projects you start to have a feeling of how much you need. Um, in this case I'll use a measuring bucket which goes up to a quarter or just over a liter and I think I need to prepare a batch with um, three or four of this and if something is left because we're mixing in parts we will probably uh, not waste it one so one part you have to be careful to try not to make it too much airborne two three Maybe three is enough, I don't know. Four. In the case of cement that is not rapid set, you can use lime, uh, which you can buy in garden centers, to, that is normally used for lawn to decrease the pH but the lime in the cement it will start speeding up the the curing reaction so it will set faster it will become harder so if you if you want if your cement is too wet but you don't you can either add a little bit of dry cement still or if it's in the beginning or a little bit of uh, lime um, so now here, now here we already have the cement, now we'll mix the fiber and how much fiber you need for this much cement probably a palm and essentially with my fingers I sort of try to separate it but as we prepare the actual mix it, it will separate on its own much better just from the working of the of the of the mixture so 
I don't know what are the actual rules, the structural engineering rules for how much fiber to add. I do it by, by eye and the cement so far, maybe they exceed uh, the requirements, I don't know. Um, next, the air and trainer. For for every one liter of this, I put about 25 milliliters, which is half of this. So for four, I need two full ones. This is the super plasticizer. I'll put a link on it for it. I use this specific brand just because it's the one I found, but there are many others. They should all work the same. You have to be extremely careful with this product. A few drops change everything. Your mixture may feel dry, but if you add a little too much of super plasticizer, it will become fluid like like milk and then you'll have to wait and it will probably compromise the structural strength uh, of your composition these are dry uh, black and red mixtures I like the black uh, I also have a yellow sand green and blue the blue doesn't work at all um, the blue doesn't work at all on on the cement for some reason maybe with white cement and perlite as a white aggregate it will work but otherwise it gets completely lost um, I did mix it, mix it with the yellow and then I had a sort of a green result and that was nice but but I it's a it's a blue is a very expensive pigment and I don't see I don't I really don't see it the only the only reason where, the only way that I see that maybe it may make a difference is if you paint the surface as as the cement is starting to to dry, and in that case it gets ad absorbed in the surf by the surface, and it it does show at the end. For this pot, I will make it. Dark of red, and the way to get it is to put red mixed with black. So remember, you can always add additive but not remove the pigment. So it's better to go slowly and and then do some experiments. I'll get some water here. I must have a spoon here somewhere. Yeah. So let me mix this. If you are too violent in the mixing, you will have cement and additives flying all over. So just be gentle while it's still dry. So it looks it 
it looks uh, as if the same color as before putting the pigment once you mix it it changes color you see here it's kind of like a cream it has some shades of red but it's still not dark enough I'll put some more red and twice as much black so a full another full bucket of red and I'll put two of black so this is half one and another half okay let's mix this again all that I'm showing here is what I've done so far myself so I know what product I will get from this but I don't know if, it's the, if this is the way to get the best product I know that the pots that I will get from the containers that I get for bonsai from in this are structurally stable they can resist freeze thaw without any problem they're strong now could I get something more beautiful with other techniques for sure probably but so this is part of the exploration and I'm sharing whatever results I'm having and and whatever I know so far as I go uh, and I'll be glad to hear whatever works for others um, so we all grow let's make another experiment because this is technically d darker than the one before we can use the same container as before This now has a terracotta look to it, which I like, but I want it darker. So I'll add more black to it. It's incredible how it changes the color once you add the, the water, right? So more black. We'll put one more of black. Two more of black. No more red. I separated half of it, two liters, and we will cr make new batches as we need. The super plasticizer, I have it here at hand in a small amount. This will mix after when it's wet. And now we'll put a little bit of water, not too much, and we start mixing. And we'll be adding more water as we need. You have to really be careful with the water. It may seem that it doesn't do anything, then all of a sudden it's all very runny. At this point, point I don't need anymore my 
mask just a little bit more water and will be it will be more than enough as you can see this doesn't look at all like cement it's like a like a chocolate chip cookie dough if you ever made that but really you, you only need as much water as necessary to hydrate all the cement what what will turn this into a mixture that that is workable is the super plasticizer however at this moment that we already mix water the time is ticking so now there is no turning back unlike other materials the more you work the cement the more workable it becomes there are other materials that as you work them they become harder this is the opposite with cement So right now it's this red wet crumbly mass now you will see the magic first let's mix all of this that we can use now I'll change this I can remove this another pair of gloves so we are one hour in in our work now the super plasticizer I go by eye also but I'm very conservative I didn't put more than a few millimeters maybe 50 and this all of a sudden starts there's a bit of powder still so I think we need a little bit more water it's quite physical this work so I'm squeezing it between my fingers um, getting all all the product from the edges all the dry stuff that I didn't mix properly in the beginning I like cooking and this is very similar that little amount of plasticizer changed completely the So now we have this wet mass it's still a bit too wet to do the horizontal surfaces but for the vertical sorry for the vertical surfaces 
but it's fine already for the horizontal ones so in order to as you work your cement you further distribute the fibers So now we can start. I don't need any more water. Um, one thing that I didn't prepare in advance that I should have was a piece of parchment paper. Where's the scissors? I will readjust the camera in a moment so you have full view of what I'm doing third pair of gloves they go fast You can buy them in Costco here in Canada, I guess in the US too. Uh, so now, as you can see, you can see the fibers everywhere. But this, I can really spread it with my fingers like this. Make a thin layer that is as thin as, as the frame is wide. And then as we cover it with a second layer on the bottom and on the top to to hide the imperfections that will be enough to to have a strong material each time you get a piece work your cement a little bit you grab a piece you spread it If I'm not mistaking, the minimum depth for structural stability for this material is 0.6 millimeters. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think it is. I can already, as you can see, put it on There will be there will be edges that are not fully covered.
the bottom will be reinforced afterwards uh, and all the defects that were left over will be worked after but for the most part the general structure is there we used so far two kilos and now we'll let it now we'll let it um, cure so now now what I want to do is to use the file and sort of look at places that have stuff hanging that that shouldn't be there um, and go around fixing these things the pot is solid already uh, but we are not done yet now we'll apply a finishing that will hide any details that were missed uh, sorry hide any defects and add some more strength but the pot is really already very strong uh, the bottom needs a layer of protection you can still see the the mesh around it here good so let's prepare a small batch of cement I will make it slightly more liquid just because um, it's easier to fill gaps with that so this should be about enough I think little bit of water mixing So here, this is a good consistency now, and we'll uh, get on with it now. I'll put this in here. I'll bring this here. Uh, So now I'm using small bits wherever I see defects that need to be patched, tiny pieces where tiny pieces where the mesh is still visible.
let's leave this like this now I have this much material let's do something with it why not This is not quite the consistency that I would have used if I were to try to imitate um, to imitate um, um, clay, but it's okay. About an hour passed since uh, finishing the pot and I removed this from the mold and this is a time where we can um, further file it This will burn all the fibers that are sticking out of the surface. As it happens, the SD card was full yesterday and I didn't notice and I didn't film part of or the continuation and in which I did the first coat of this container and I removed from from the from the mold this one here which is a for a companion plant and it doesn't have a drainage either it has slits so uh, just very briefly I will perform now the second coat and after it, after it dries we will look at the final result but it will look essentially just like this 
this piece weights uh, four and a half kilos and it's a little heavier than I expected it to be but it's very sturdy um, and uh, it's ready to be used actually so the 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 sealer that I use is Pro Max wet look from um, interstar.ca but if you go to any um, if you go to any box big box store like Home Depot you will find a number of sealers wet look uh, natural look the natural look will give you something more tamed like this so let's go ahead and mix this and apply it 45 minutes after after um, applying the sealer I will be able to I will be able to to use it already it will be dry but I normally let it dry for much longer like uh, Well, as long as I need to plant it, really. So the idea is just to to paint every nook and cranny. And as you can see, this specific sealer here is white, but it turns transparent, as you can see. And this is a very useful to be able to see where you miss the spot. Hey, this is the final product of the pot and it's fully fully sealed and dry and it took uh, longer to make simply because I had many breaks in between but um, yeah, in, the, in about eight hours a pot like this can be done and with the leftover I made this pot here which is has slits here and it could be a companion pot for this and with the leftover sealer I just sealed these pieces of bark that I had lying around and they look quite beautiful sealed and protected they look serve as inspiration for working on dead wood or i may even use pieces like this in pots in the future i hope this um this video was instructive it, there is really not much to it um artistically it i'm still developing technically i'm I landed on a particular solution of how to use concrete there may be uh, may, many other things to do with it um, molding it and with other additives uh, and aggregates such as perlite I experimented a little bit with perlite in the past and I'll do again this again has no drainage hole drainage comes from the edges of these cuts that are really going to the bottom and the aeration comes from the sides like I said I don't quite like the quasi geometric rim here I think it doesn't work I should have broken it up as I did in the round that I'm showing on the inset here at the same time uh, and however once I plant a tree here and it should be there is space here for a big tree uh, this will break the geometry a little bit the perceived geometry and uh, it will I think it will look uh, quite nice um, 
it's a four and um, four and a half kilos one foot by one foot and it's uh, quite sturdy really it holds up so I hope this video entices you to look at concrete as, a, as another opportunity for artistic outlet and the, 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 the possibility of, of, of creating a pot specifically for a, a root system once you have seen the root system and so spreading a repotting over two days and then build the, the pot and then repot on it the next day I think there are so many possibilities that can be done with this um, and we'll see what happens in the future so thank you for watching and until the next one bye bye